Hey everyone, it's Sevi. Now that our favorite Coco Goat is on her way to her first rerun, I thought it was time to make an updated guide for Gan Yu. We are going to cover everything from her kit, playstyles, constellations, stat priorities, artifact sets, weapons, and team comps. Let's begin! So how does Ganyu work? Let's start with Ganyu's famed charge shots. When you do an aimed shot with Ganyu, you can get different charge levels depending on how long you hold it for. Holding it for one second gives you a charge level 1, which is just your single cryo infused aim shot. But holding it for two seconds gives you the charge level 2 frost flake arrow that hits first then blooms into massive AoE cryo damage. Ganyu's charge attacks have incredibly high damage scaling, but additionally, they can also do reverse melt reactions in a row if paired with Bennett and Shang Ling. All these add to why her charge attacks can get so OP. To further enhance that, Ganyu has a passive talent, Undivided Heart, that after firing a Frostflake arrow gives a 20% crit rate increase of the next Frostflake arrows and blooms. So you can imagine adding 20% more crit rate for charged attacks in those cases. Also, if the enemy in question has a weak point and you're good at aiming, you can pretty much get guaranteed crits. Next, let's talk about Ganyu's burst. Although it doesn't directly increase her charged attack damage, it's still a big part of her kit and a significant source of damage. Her Celestial Shower has a big area of effect, inside which she drops lots of icicles over time that each deal AoE damage. These icicles also auto-target enemies, so Ganyu's burst highly benefits from crowd control units like Venti. With enemies grouped together, the icicles will drop in the same place and deal lots of instances of AoE damage at once. Ganyu's burst probably has the best uptime for off-field cryo application. Its duration and cooldown are exactly the same at 15 seconds, and it only costs 60 energy. It has further support utility through Ganyu's other ascension passive, which gives a 20% cryo damage bonus to the active characters within the burst's AoE, giving her support synergy with cryo characters. Lastly, Ganyu's skill is a taunt that moves her backwards so that she can reposition herself and target enemies that are occupied by it. It deals AoE cryo damage upon casting, and if it hits an enemy, it will generate two cryo particles. If it runs out of HP or expires its duration, it will explode in more AoE cryo damage. If that hits an enemy, it will give you two more cryo particles. Having reviewed Ganyu's kit and its intricacies, we can see she's a versatile character. As a DPS, she has powerful charged attacks that can be used for both melt and perma-freeze reactions, along with her other forms of AoE cryo application. Then her burst functions as an enabler for other freeze or reaction-based teams DPSs or quick swap teams to shine, and her skill support utility can be used by both her and her teammates. So while you don't need to confine yourself to any of these single Ganyu playstyles, the different ways of building her will depend on how you want to play her. So from here, throughout the guide, I will constantly be referring to these different roles with their corresponding advice. So which of Ganyu's talents should you prioritize? Firstly, I recommend getting all her talents up to level 6. If you plan on keeping Ganyu on field most of the time, then definitely prioritize her charge shot. If you're going to play her as an off-field support or in a quick swap team, prioritize her burst first. Ganyu is one of the most C0 friendly characters out there, but let's see what her constellations give. Ganyu C1 is already a good stopping point. When an enemy gets hit by her Frost Flake, it lowers their cryo resistance by 15%. Furthermore, it lets her Frost Flake arrows generate 2 energy for Ganyu, helping charge her burst faster. Overall, a useful constellation for boosting her damage. C2 just gives a second charge of her skill. Having two taunts on field can definitely be useful for positioning on the battlefield and at least it allows for more cryo particle generation. However, it pales in comparison to her later constellations and isn't as much of a boost as her first one. C3 increases her burst by 3 levels so it's stronger damage over time. Her C4 causes enemies within her burst AoE to take more and more damage over time. It does take a whole 15 seconds for all the stacks to take effect, but if you can get Ganyu's burst back up within 3 seconds after the burst expires, then the enemies will continue to take that increased damage. The wording might be a bit confusing though. From what I've researched, this damage increase is added to the damage bonus multipliers of your character's damage, and it doesn't necessarily amplify your total damage. Basically, the resulting final damage increase increase will be much lower than the description makes it sound. I don't have a C4 Ganyu to test, but that's how it seems to work based on various testimonies. 
C5 increases her skill level by 3. And finally, C6 Ganyu is just wow. The description only tells you that she gets a free Frost Flake Arrow and Bloom after using her skill. But remember that this stacks on top of all her previous constellations. Accounting for her C2, which gives her two skill charges, that means Ganyu can do a Frost Flake skill, Frost Flake skill, Frost Flake combo in a matter of seconds. With her C1, she can regenerate even more energy in that short span of time, getting her burst to charge even faster. So if you want Ganyu speedruns, then this is it. Next, let's look at her stat priorities. For DPS Ganyu, she will definitely want a crit circlet. Ganyu's ascension stat is crit damage, but remember that Ganyu has several sources of crit rate. Cryo Resonance, her passive talent, and Blizzard Strayer set if she's on it, but we'll cover that more later. So if you can achieve at least a 60% crit rate in total, not just from her actual crit stat, but including other sources of crit rate, then I recommend just building your crit damage upwards. For Ganyu's goblet, you'll want a cryo damage goblet, but an attack goblet can be a temporary substitute. Ganyu's sands will depend on your playstyle. In general, you can just get her an attack sands, but if she's in a melt comp, go for EM. Still, consider their substats too, as that can make one much better than the other. If you're playing Ganyu as a burst support, you can give her an attack or ER sands if she needs the energy, aiming for about 160% ER. For substats, try to get crit rate and damage and attack. EM won't be bad for Melt Ganyu, and even if you play her for her charge shots, having some ER is good for enabling her burst. Now let's talk about artifact sets for low AR and high AR players. For low AR players, there's the two-piece or four-piece martial artist set for the charge to attack damage, which is like a weaker Shimanawa set without the energy drain. The two-piece of Braveheart or Resolution of Sojourner are decent for added attack, and the four-piece of Sojourner at least further ensures crit hits if you're not good at targeting weak points. If you want to use Ganyu for her burst, you can't go wrong with two-piece exile or two-piece scholar for more ER, and the four-piece exile gives her additional team battery utility. Lastly, the Instructor's 2-piece effect is good for a Melt Ganyu, but the 4-piece effect could help with a reaction team or further boost Ganyu's own Melt reactions. Now let's look at high AR artifacts, starting with DPS Ganyu builds. We have four top choices. First is 4-piece Wanderer's Troop. This set gives her an unconditional 35% damage bonus to her charged attacks, which applies both to the Frostflake Arrow and the Bloom. While it's pretty universal and easy to use, Wanderer's Troop is especially useful for Ganyu Melt comps thanks to that extra ADEM from the 2-piece bonus. Then there's 4P Shimanawa, but I would only recommend this set if you're good at energy management and have invested a lot into her DPS capabilities since it sacrifices her burst uptime. It supercharges her charged attack and the duration of the buff even matches Ganyu's skill cooldown. These are the two top choices for Melt Ganyu and their damage difference, if utilized correctly, is very negligible. The benefit of Wanderers is that it's not strictly locked behind a condition, unlike Shimanawa which has more complicated mechanics that require micro managing from you. However, Shimanawa is easier to farm as a domain drop, whereas the Wanderers requires boss battle drops or strong box rerolls. Personally, I'd go with the Wanderers set for its ease of use. Another option is the 4-piece Bolide, which gives a 40% damage bonus given that Ganyu is shielded. It's a good set, but you'd only want this if you'll always have a shielder like Zhongli or Diona. Also farmable, but farming the Shimanawa domain might be better for getting emblem pieces rather than the archaic Petra from the Bolide domain. Next is the 4-piece Blizzard Strayer, which is best used in permafreeze teams. Since this set gives an additional 40% crit rate against frozen enemies, Ganyu in a permafreeze comp barely needs any crit rate stats and you can just stack tons of crit damage stats. It's an especially strong set, you just need to ensure consistent hydro application for the effect to have max uptime. You can still technically use it in non-freeze teams, but the potential isn't as maximized. While farming for these sets, you can temporarily give Ganyu any combination of 2-piece Blizzard Strayer, 2-piece Glad Shimanawa, or 2-piece Wanderers. However, if you're going to be a Ganyu main, I highly suggest you invest in the 4-piece sets. Now what about support Ganyu? She can make good use of 4-piece Blizzard Strayer if you're still playing her in a freeze comp. Alternatively, you can also give her a full Emblem or Noblesse set if no one else on the team has full Noblesse yet, but if you're playing her as a support in a freeze team, Blizzard Strayer is still a higher priority. Or you can settle for 2-piece combinations of these sets with 2-piece Glad Shimanawa as backup choices too.
Now let's talk about weapons, first for DPS Ganyu. Starting with 3-star options, the Messenger Bow and Sharpshooter's Oath are temporary options until you get a better weapon, so they require a good aim. For 4-star bows, it's a toss-up between Prototype Crescent, Hamayumi, and Blackcliff Warbow. All of these have their own conditions for triggering their passives, resulting in each having drawbacks. Hamayumi's buff, while strong, needs you to not cast Ganyu's burst to be maximized, but this, in my opinion, loses out on a significant part of Ganyu's kit. Yes, a DPS Ganyu relies on charged attack, but the burst provides damage and bonus effects that I think are still valuable enough to cast. Blackcliff Warbow isn't as good for boss battles since it loses out on the attack percent stacking effects, but is otherwise a solid option for mobs. Then for Prototype Crescent, not every enemy has a weak spot for triggering its passive, but if it can be triggered, it comes out on top among these free-to-play bows. If you can aim well, I personally highly recommend the Prototype Crescent. If you're on the battle pass, the Viridescent Hunt is useful for clumping up enemies, but damage-wise, the free-to-play bows can perform better. So consider all these pros and cons and see which is best suited to your playstyle. For 5-star bows, Ganyu's best in slot to this day is still the Amos bow. This is because her Frostflake Bloom has a 0.3 second delay that counts towards the Amos bow's passive. This even stacks on top of the arrow's flight time, so it's easy for Ganyu to get the max 52% charge attack damage buff on R1. Of course, you can still give Ganyu the Thundering Pulse, which is pretty much a universal stat stick, but take note that its passive is only for normal attacks, not charged attacks. There's also the Polar Star, but you'll want to insert a normal attack alongside Ganyu's other talents to trigger the full effect. The Skyward Harp is also still a generally viable weapon for her as yet another stat stick. If you have any of these, they're all excellent options, but in general, Amos Bow is still the best. If you're using Ganyu as a support, you don't need to think too hard about her weapons. There's Favonius War Bow and Sacrificial Bow for the energy recharge, and the fun thing about the Sac Bow is you can use it to leave two taunts on the field at once, even at C0. If you want to increase her off-field burst damage, Moon's Moon, Alley Hunter, or Stringless will all do the job. Among 5 stars, her best support pick will be the Elegy for the End, and it's the only one that gives a team-wide support buff. The differences among these boils down to either having a bow that helps with her ER and burst uptime, or that increases her burst damage. If you pick one of the two, your artifacts should complement the other aspect. Finally, Ganyu's team comps vary according to playstyle. Starting with Melt DPS Ganyu, she has a really strong team in Ganyu, Shangling, Bennett, and Zhongli or Diona. The main concept is to use Bennett's buff to snapshot Ganyu and Shangling, and use both Bennett's and Shangling's strong pyro application as a base for Ganyu's reverse melt. However, Shangling's burst will require you to go near the enemy, and since Ganyu is squishy af and prone to interruption, you need a very strong shielder like Zhongli or Diona. C6 Diana's extra EM buff can greatly help here as well. Mount Ganyu is also workable with a pyro-infused Kazuha burst. Sucrose is a good contender too, especially since she can hold thrilling tails, but you'll want to make sure you can get a very high burst uptime with her. Jean can also swirl pyro with her burst to spread pyro application. However, these are trickier to work with. Pyro infusions or swirls aren't always a guarantee and often need good timing. Now for Freeze Ganyu. In general, you need to comp Ganyu you with a hydro unit that can provide off-field hydro application, another cryo unit for the cryo resonance and to get extra cryo particles, and a viridescent venerer user to shred resistance. This is the basic layout that can be filled in by several options, but it's also the format of one of Ganyu's strongest teams, the Morgana team. The Morgana team is composed of Mona, Ganyu, Diona, and Venti and has proven its synergy time and time again. There are videos that go more in depth about this team, but suffice to say, it works extremely well if you have it. Some substitutes for Mona include Kokomi, who is really a great hydro applier, Barbara, but her hydro application is very short range, and Singchu, but his swords need to be triggered by normal attacks, not charged ones. Substitutes for Venti are, of course, most other animal units. For Cryo, Zarya and Kaya make good batteries, and now there's even Shen He, who can further shred cryo resistance and buff Ganyu even more, but overall, most cryo units are viable too. Now that Shen He's in the mix, Ganyu could fit in a mod 
mono cryo comp as well with one more cryo teammate and an animal resistance shredder. Ganyu as a support on the other hand can be used for different DPSs and usually in permafreeze situations. For example, she can be played as permafreeze with Kokomi and it will be Kokomi mostly on the field or with child as your DPS. You can try melting with a pyro DPS but you will generally want at least another cryo character to better maintain a cryo aura and battery. Or even add in a hydro unit for extra vape freeze reactions. Ganyu's cryo can also be used to maintain superconduct, but there are arguably cheaper cryo units for that purpose. In general, she's a reliable support for off-field cryo application, for whatever purpose you'll want it. And who knows what team she might enable in the future? We'll have to wait and see. So that's going to be it for this full updated Ganyu guide everyone. If you're a soon to be Ganyu haver, let us know how you plan to build her in the comments below. If you're watching just after getting her, how do you like her so far? And those who already main her, feel free to share your experience too. If this video helped you out, don't forget to leave a like, consider subscribing to my channel for more guides and Genshin Impact content, and I will see you soon. Take care!